sweet. Little burn at the back there. Little burn. I think that's just. I think that's just the alcohol. <laughs> you, you, does it like? Does it feel like a nine volt battery, or does it feel like a, a really intense hot sauce? Hmm. I'm assuming I'll you go. put a nine volt battery on your tongue before, like. I mean, I just took it out before we got on this podcast. <laughs> The Fred Minnick Show is brought to you by 291 Colorado Whiskey, by Michter's, and by Heaven Hill Brands. And joining the Fred Minnick Show, model and fashion designer, influencer, Holly Stocks. How you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm living the dream, and you know, yeah. you gave me a challenge. You said that you normally don't drink whiskey, so I've got I've got some work to do here. Yeah, you do. <laughs> So what? Yep. T- tell us what you normally drink. Um. Well, one of them I'll just say I I won't say that one. <laughs> she mentioned but... vodka, everybody. So yeah, I <laughs> kind of kind of came out. You know how it is. Oh no! Oops. Um. Or I'm a, I'm a wino. So you like wine? Do you have a Do you have a genre of wine? A style that you really like? I'm, or I'm a cab girl. Okay, California. Yeah. California cabs. Yeah, okay. yeah, love them. So you you like you like big and uh, and and bold, right? Is that about right? Um, I like fruit forward. Okay, but you know, low acidic, so I don't get the heartburn. <laughs> I mean, if you're getting heartburn from uh, red wine, you know <laughs> this this might you might find this is an upgrade actually. Like whiskey, whiskey causes heartburn. Well, I'm not a doctor, so I can't really. Oh no! That. Yeah, yeah. So I can't. I can't go there. But it, it's not. It's good. I don't think you'll have heartburn. At least I hope not, because then I'll be in trouble, right? So. Oh man, yeah, you're gonna be in really big trouble. <laughs> so what do you? Pills or anything? What do you been up to? You've been. Uh, you've you've had a lot of stuff cooking in the past. Uh, in the past year. Yeah, um, just doing a lot of collabs with companies and. Working with a lot of brands, traveling. Um, I just I enjoy what I do. I love everything, the fashion side of it, mm-hmm. the Western industry. I just I feel like I add a little flair to it. I'm definitely different than some. So and I and I realize that, but I've just realized also to be myself because that's what I'm comfortable being. So now, what now? What do you mean you're different than some? What What does that mean? Well, I'm a little more edgy, mm-hmm. and I realize that so um and at first i was like okay fine maybe i'll just you know cover it up put on (laughs) cover it up to here and like (laughs) but it just wasn't me Mm. and it's not really who i am and i just feel like you know the best people that they just do that what they are and be what they are and that's what i'm most comfortable doing so so you're saying like like in the fashion world you you're uh, that's what you're talking about there yeah, yeah, yeah. What is give take us you know, as uh, as as someone who wears an ascot, and I, I did a sh- I did I did a little bit of fashion photography back in the day, but not really a lot. But don't really have much uh, of a history there. So I, I was just curious. What is what? Paint us a picture. Tell us what the what the fashion world's like, because you know we have these. We have these visions of the Delaware's Prada, you know, and then there's the whole Nashville scene where everybody's like talking about Jesus and then wearing cowboy boots and and having affairs at night, you know. <laughs> so give give us an idea of what is uh, what does the fashion scene look like? Well, I mean, it's a wide variety as we all know. Um, but, you know, sometimes in the western industry, it's old school. So, like you're saying, it's very modest and very um, the way that they've been doing it for years. Um, And that's totally fine, but I just kind of take it and put my little twist on it, which is a little more edge to it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I just have fun with it. So, I enjoy it and uh, I love it. You know, I love everything fashion. I feel like I've been doing it forever. (laughs) Even when when I was little. When did you start? Um, well, to be honest with you, I have always like even my mom 
tells me stories when I was a kid, how I used to just, they used to call me the bag lady. <laughs> I would carry like all these purses and like all this, like, you know, necklaces, like, you know, fake ones and plastic and all the things. And my mom said, she just let me be myself. She was like, I used to fight you, but you would pitch a fit. So I just let you do your thing. <laughs> So I feel like I've always kind of wanted to be who I am and dress how I like and always had that mentality on that. But um, I also did photography prior to this for about 10 years. Um, And I still do it, just don't do it as much um, because this picked up so much. I am just not, I had to kind of pick one. Right. Um, But um, in doing that, I styled all my clients too. So, okay. um, Yeah. What kind of yep. what kind of camera did you shoot with? Nikon. Woohoo! Yeah, Nikon <laughs> family. Yeah, yeah, I uh I uh I I was a photographer in the army and then I did food photography. I've always been Nikon. I've always uh never liked Canon. Like everything all the buttons yeah. are backwards and everything is so different. Yeah, I've tried to use one of my friends one time and I I was like I don't even know what's going on here. I know, it's like a, it's like a whole other world. Like you can't um it's like yeah. driving on the wrong side of the road in another country. <laughs> that, do really you is. did did you ever um, did you ever do film? Or was it all digital? No, I never really dabbled into that too much. Um, towards the end, of, I shouldn't say end, but just when I started taking my break, I guess mm-hmm. um, I started to a little bit, but I just never really got into it fully. Um, I would just usually find someone that's really good at that and hire them on or something like that okay so well yeah. the film now yeah, it's f- like video is like the thing now yeah well and let's be honest this this thing right here you know replaced i'm telling you uh, it replaced everything i yeah. i and, and by the way i held up an iphone for those just listening and <laughs> i i remember when the when the iphone came out and I was like, oh, wow, this is pretty nice. But then I was like, it'll never be able to reach the capability of my Nikon D2X, you know. Yeah. And, uh, and, you know, I used to, I did and? things like photograph the Kentucky Derby, uh, photographed like uh, football games and food. And I was like, there's no way I can't, you know, mm-hmm. an iPhone would ever be able to do that. And then they got better and better and better. And then Instagram came out and I was just like, I'm done. I am no longer going to be trying to be a professional photographer. Uh, I cannot compete with this, so I'm out. <laughs> yeah, it's hard because honestly, I do a lot of my pictures with my iPhone. Yeah, you know, because I mean, it's just you can do just as good, and all the editing programs that they have for the phones, and you know, it's just easier. It's so, so and I have a camera. I could bring yeah. my camera. Just I don't even want to mess with all that. Like you can even <laughs> so. get better angles with the iPhone. And it's like it, yeah. it's, it's it's like almost like a macro lens, like built in. It's like you can get like inches away. Yeah. It's it's crazy. Plus, but, being uh, able to see yourself on the camera is a little easier when you're taking your own photos. That's <laughs> Let's true. Be too. honest. Yeah. No. Now, are you are you a duck lips person? Like, have you do you have the duck lip? You know, when they're doing the selfie, have you mastered that? Oh my god. <laughs> no. <laughs> There's no not uh, really no forced I mean, duck lips. I mean, I'm not going to say I've never done it here and there, sure, but I, f- I don't I, typically do. That's not my that's not my signature pose. <laughs> I, I, fi- I find myself I find myself more and more, you know, when when my wife because we do my wife wants to do selfies, you know, like we'll be out mm-hmm. and she wants to she, the arms out or my arm comes out. And we wants to do a selfie. I just find myself naturally just like you know, just kind of looking at the camera and then. When it comes out, it looks like I'm doing duck lips. And she's like, hey, you're doing duck lips. I'm like, no, that's just what I look like, <laughs> you know? So, I mean, here I am. Yeah. I feel like I've been getting false accusation on duck lips for, for my wife, you know, for the past well, couple of years. Well, let me see it. Let me see your duck lip pose. This is just it. <laughs> oh, I see it. <laughs> this, is, this is just me just looking at the camera going, that's me putting my lips together and not smiling. And, again, if I smile... You know, it's it's a whole different look. I mean, sometimes it doesn't even look like I'm smiling and I'm smiling. So I'm like, I, I give up. I'll just like look away in the camera, look away from the camera aimlessly into the clouds. You know, well, I, don't I typically know. just give the, you know, whatever you want to, resting bitch face, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> maybe, maybe you could do this whole new thing where you coach people 
about how to like you know how to pull off like a good instagram shot because i you know i I, i've got followers but i have no idea what i'm doing half the time you know and people usually people usually just want to see a whiskey bottle from me anyway so (laughs) (laughs) well i mean actually being a photographer you know i do know the whole posing stuff too and lighting and yeah. all of that so it, it i probably should do something it might be beneficial to some people but there you go um back on that note it was funny because i didn't really have a lot of pictures of me smiling and people were like do you have all your teeth <laughs> they they didn't know if i had all my teeth or not i was like yeah i mean I that's <laughs> i mean how do you how did you take that were you were you like offended or was like no, I just thought it was funny, to be honest with you. I was like, I guess it kind of makes sense, you know? You never see her teeth. You might wonder if she has all her teeth. Because, look, I've I've spent a lot of time in Tennessee, and there are many a people uh, there without teeth at a young age. So, like, I mean. <laughs> Especially because I moved from Alabama. So, they're probably yeah. thinking, huh, putting two and two together. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I didn't want to say it, but. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, well, you know, today, um, you know, you've, you've got photography down, you've got fashion down today. Hopefully, uh, you're able to add whiskey love to that list to, you know, you've got, uh, you've got my book, uh, you've got some, you're going to have some training here today. So hopefully you come out of this and break away from the shackles of, uh, of vodka and, uh, and start sipping some, uh, some whiskey. (laughs) <laughs> what do you say? Are you ready? Let's try it out. Okay. Let's try it out. So you have uh, three uh, glasses or three three bottles that are labeled A, B, and C. You see that? I do. Yep. So you're going to take glass A or, or bottle A and pour it into a glass. And I we have a are. Question. Go ahead. <laughs> This must be your favorite. You poured that one to the top. <laughs> oh. <laughs> then the other ones were not poured to the top? <laughs> no. Oh, my. Uh, okay. Wow. Yeah, you must love this one. That one, uh, that one got a, lo- <laughs> little, a little bit more heavier pour, huh? A little yeah. Heavier pour. Got excited about this one. That got, right. it, got, it got my duck lips pour. So. <laughs> nice. So go ahead. So am I putting... Yeah, pour that into a glass. Mm-hmm. All right. And Holly, what, how it's going to start off? What we're going to do first is we are going to do some. Uh, we're going to do some training. You know, some basic training of okay. uh, of how to taste. Like, um, you know, this is the story of of whiskey. Kind of begins with the color. When it goes into the barrel, it's as clear as the water from your tap. So every single day, it's moving in and out of that wood. And so all of the color comes from the barrel. So the color, you know, it's it's your it's your first look at to what you're about to taste. And, you know, it can give you some indication of whether or not it might be good or so. You know, if it's really light, chances are it'll, it'll taste differently than if it's really dark. So that's the first right. thing you look for. And then you swirled around since you got some wine training. You under you understand <laughs> legs and everything. Um, yeah, it's it's similar in it's similar in bourbon, but instead of uh, like residual sugars, it's it's basically residual oils. And then you want to bring it to your nose. And when you smell bourbon, you want to smell it with your mouth slightly open, and kind of go side by side. Give it the duck lip thing. Yeah, well, just just a slight open. <laughs> I mean, maybe that's what this. Maybe that's why <laughs> I smell so much whiskey. Maybe the opening of the nose is actually a duck lip, duck duck <laughs> lip technique. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Never thought of so. it that way. <laughs> so here, here we are uh, b- breaking new ground here. No longer am I going to say just open your mouth a little bit. I'm just I'm going to start saying, give it the duck lips. So. Yeah. Do a little. But when you when you do that, you're relaxing your olfactory. You're able to pick up more than just the alcohol. And then when you isolate the nostrils, you your no two nostrils will ever smell in unison. And so, and no one has more than two nostrils. You know, you don't have four nostrils. So like well, they're kind of 
Apparently, I mean, there could be somebody. I read a story the other day. <laughs> I read a story the other day about somebody who was born with four legs, and he had a mm. he had a twin stuck inside that him, like really a fast. Yeah. It, well, he <laughs> he was in a circus and stuff, and he was um, oh, wow. he was like in the early 1900s. He ended up having kids and everything, but apparently, he was a real nice guy. So, I, I, it's not inconceivable that it uh, you could be born with multiple nostrils. Um, <laughs> hey. I'm sure there's somebody out there. Going to the Google. So if you're listening or watching this, go to the Google and, and uh, tweet at us or message us on uh, Instagram or tag us if you found a yeah. multi-nostril person. Uh, okay, so... It's not me. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's neither one of us. We we are uh, we have two nostrils apiece. So the first thing you do when you're smelling is you're kind of like making sure... It's like um, it doesn't have any bad notes in it, like turpentine, kerosene. If you smell those kinds of things, uh, you know the, the nose really does protect you from bad alcohol. There's people who who yeah, there's people who who actually drink that stuff, and if they would have smelled it beforehand, they might have still drank it, but at least they would have known <laughs> yeah. they're about to drink something that's gonna you know put them in the hospital. Right. But um, then after that, you're kind of looking for the good things. So let's break this down together. Let's. I want you to like as you're smelling it. I want you just to give me like a general category. Does it smell sweet? Does it smell spicy? Um, does it smell you know herbly? Like kind of give me like a general smell characteristic that you're getting out of the glass. Hmm. I'm gonna go a little uh, spicy. Okay. I see you. I'll see you are that spicy, and I'd say yeah. you know you're pretty spot on with that. It's definitely got some uh, baking spice notes, a uh, little sweet in there too, a little bit. And then when we now for the fun part, when we taste, um, you just want to put a little bit on your tongue and just kind of really focus on what part of the tongue it's hitting, because this is the part of of like what I do. It's kind of like taste mindfulness, and I used it in my therapy uh, when I got home from Iraq and, and you really focus on what part of the tongue is it hitting. You get your mm -hmm. sweet notes on the tip, you get your savory in the middle, you get your spice in the back, and then you get a bitterness note like uh, in the back toward the middle uh, and also on the sides. So just put a little bit on your tongue and think about what part of the tongue is it hitting. After you've done that, we'll taste it again and really focus on that part of the tongue to see if you can pick up any flavors. Here we go. You're really going to get me drunk here, you know. <laughs> I get that a lot. <laughs> okay. Okay. Hmm. You digging that? I mean, I don't know if digging it would be the word. <laughs> maybe uh tolerating it <laughs> i was gonna say is it tolerable um yeah is there yeah. a part of the tongue that it feels more prominent the back okay so that's the spicy area you smelled spice you tasted spice so yeah. your, your your tongue is is working well uh, well in unison with your nose so let's taste it again and think about focus on that back part and like think about what um, what is the most prominent flavor there like now that you know it's spice what kind of spice is it is it baking spice pepper spice uh, kind of try to really dive into that see okay. figure out what you uh, can taste there here we go Oof. <laughs> Better the second time? <laughs> I'm feeling pepper. Pepper? Okay. Something. It's um, pretty spicy to me. Do you still feel it on your tongue? Is it still yeah. still there? So if it's still there, you know, that's the that's the finish. Like after after you've swallowed it, and you can mm -hmm. still feel it around. So yeah. did the second taste, did it, did it warm up to you a little bit? A little bit. Okay. Yeah. I like it. 
Oh, we've upgraded from tolerable to I like it. <laughs> Wait a minute. I said I feel like it. <laughs> oh, I feel like it. All right, all right. Not not Calm quite the upgrade now. yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, let's go to let's go to um, glass uh, B. So grab your a steak. Though I need to pour this out, huh? Oh, okay. Well, do you have other glasses, or you could pour that out and just go. Uh... Or I'll just pour it back in. How about that? I'm the and... only one drinking these things, right? Well, I don't know. You can. I mean, you could throw a par- <laughs> you could throw a party later for all I know. And um... well, I feel like alcohol kills the germs. Oh. That's true. You could throw you could throw a duck lip party and then uh, every, everybody everybody shows up and sip some whiskey. <laughs> I don't know if I like the name of this party. What would we call? What would what would what would the uh, the next Holly Stocks party be? <laughs> what would we call that? Um, shoot, I don't know. I'm not sure. I'd have to think about that one. Caught I'm, me I'm off guard. Seeing it headlined. You know, it's advertised everywhere. Everybody wants to come to it. There's whiskey involved. All right, we'll follow up on that <laughs> whiskey. one. Like okay. now, I now I it's We're, it's a it's a whiskey it's, it's a whiskey, whiskey tango. It's a whiskey and fashion <laughs> show. Whiskey tango. Uh, there's actually a distillery called Whiskey Tango in uh, Hotel Whiskey Tango in uh, in Indianapolis. Yeah, I was gonna say something, but I think that's better than that. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Keep that one to myself. No, I, well, what you get there? <laughs> is it a little? Is it non politically correct? Because this, uh, I mean, no one, no one expects political correctness on this show. Well, it's definitely, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, you know what whiskey tango stands for. Well, I, I know it's in the phonetic alphabet, but you, t- <laughs> t- t- you tell me where you're going with this. You say somebody's little whiskey tango, it means they're white trash. You know. Oh, well, actually, whiskey tango. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Yeah, and hey, listen, that's not cut down, okay? Because I'm from Alabama. <laughs> well, I'm, I can get I'm down with all of it. I'm from Oklahoma, so and I live in Kentucky, so I, I it kind of like a lateral move to the to that world. But I, I would say that, you know, whiskey tango was always used just like when we were like, uh, you know, doing things over the radio. So, True. I'll be darn. Yeah. So it means white trash. <laughs> it's a nicer way, you know. I should have. I should have had I whiskey tango. <laughs> had I known that this was going to come up in the conversation, I would have sent you some like bush light or some natural light or <laughs> or or what's another what's another really low class beer that will just uh, mess you up and give you a headache <laughs> like you've never had. Definitely, definitely bush light for sure. Michelin, bush light. I don't know. A bush, I you know, bush light makes my toe. My, my brain is hurting just even thinking about that. Oh my gosh, we used to drink that in high school. Oh yeah. Can you like field parties? They would fill it mm. up with a keg, like bush light. <laughs> I mean, what is in that shit? We used it, to call it the beast. The beast? <laughs> oh, yeah. that is true though. It <laughs> yeah. was it was raunchy. Maybe yeah. PBR is quite a bit more accepted today, but back in the old days, it was pretty bad. And Schlitz, ugh. Huge beer drinker, but you know, got a little Boone's Farm and oh. Zima's. <laughs> oh wait, you had Zima? Yeah, every once in a while. Why not? You know? Did you do you drink White Claw? No. All right. I don't well, like White Claw. Yeah. Cheers mm-hmm. to that. All right. <laughs> no. All right. Remember your training, Holly, as we go to uh, Glass B. All right. Oh. Ho, 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 ho. What are we smelling here? Oh, kind of like a little nice lotion I might put on. <laughs> Wait, you smell you smell like a lotion that you would you would wear? <laughs> Maybe kind of. Break this lotion down for me, like. She's sweet and it, uh Okay, so a little smoky. It's, is it a, a hand lotion, bear. face lotion, <laughs> whole body? I mean <laughs> foot lotion <laughs> <laughs> a smoky sweet lotion okay you put it on your feet <laughs> this is for your feet <laughs> a lo- th- this lotion is for your feet okay no, no. I'm just kidding no. 
It does. Uh, you you don't like that one, huh? This is a fave. No, well, no, I, I'm <laughs> I'm intrigued because I like getting other notes from people to see what they smell and what what triggers for them as a memory. I'm I'm fascinated because you are the second guest I've had in in a month that has yeah. brought up some type of uh, <laughs> like you know, look, men, we don't use lotions and perfumes and stuff. You know, yeah. it's just for shaving and beard creams that they're a little bit more popular now okay it's a beard cream it's not in our it's not in our <laughs> dna to know lotions like that and and she brought up a, a body spray oh. from victoria's secret she said this whiskey reminds me of a body spray at victoria's secret and now you're <laughs> you're mentioning you're mentioning lotion so i'm yeah. seeing i'm seeing a trend here you know if i was to put it in a bottle of what this might be i would say it's a woodsy woman you know, she's out in the woods. She's chopping firewood. The woodsy woman chopping firewood. <laughs> Has she ever murdered anybody? Could she murder somebody? <laughs> you might want to watch yourself, but you know what? She's sweet. <laughs> okay. She will she's murder sweet. you if you try to trespass yeah. on her territory. She's sweet, smoky, and knows how to chop wood. Chopping wood. All right, here we go. Let's let's taste after the woodsy woman here. This is the go. We're just gonna call it woodsy woman now. Here we go. Yeah. That's better. This Definitely is definitely better than the first. This is winning your heart. Well, she's sweet, you know. <laughs> <laughs> kind of hard when they're sweet love it um, yeah it's a little smoky i feel like okay sweet a little burn at the back there a little burn I think that's just i think that's just the alcohol <laughs> do you does it like does it feel like a nine volt battery or does it feel like a, a really intense hot sauce hmm I'm assuming you put a 9-volt battery on your tongue before. like. I mean, I just took it out before we got on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm. No, I would definitely go with the battery option, probably. <laughs> okay, so then that is alcohol burn. All right. Yeah. Let's 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 taste it one more time, see if that alcohol burn is there, still there. I'm not saying that this is how you get rid of it. I just I just want to see if uh, if it's still if it's still there for that's you. That's how you get drunk. That that's how you get rid of it. You just drink the whole damn bottle. You know. Let's what I'm see if it still burns. <laughs> so far, if I was going to pick one, I'd go with number. I mean, sorry, letter. <laughs> letter B. All right, so letter B is is your champion so far. We got one more to taste. Yeah, and I'll be very curious to see where this one where this one falls. Oh no! Uh oh! Not sure what that means, but people well, people go crazy for this particular one. Like this is oh, a really? yeah, this is you know. This is one of those highly allocated products that um, that people people fall in love with and go crazy for. Hmm. Is this the? Well, I guess we can't know yet. Yeah, yeah. You know, you <laughs> you don't know what they are. I actually do know what they are. Well, right I now. don't, but I know that there was something a bottle that was sent in. I sent you. Yeah, you got some additional bottles. That'll be to, for you to enjoy at that uh, at that party you're gonna throw. The, uh, <laughs> my whiskey tango party your whiskey tango party <laughs> kind of like a salsa but yeah, right yeah it's instead of <laughs> um you know instead of guacamole there's you know vel melted velveta no cheese with uh you know pickled uh, jalapenos the in it spray cheese the spray cheese, <laughs> <laughs> it's spray cheese. And, then, and then and then you go to the like uh Go to the grocery store to the tortilla section where, you know, they have like a shelf life of 10 years, you know, those, uh, <laughs> exactly. Those really highly, you know, you look on the, on the ingredients list, there's like a four page book of preservatives keeping those tortillas <laughs> from molding out. 
That's right. Definitely fresh off the shelf. Yes, it's uh, <laughs> so good for you. All right, so remember yeah. your training. Here we go. Okay. Give it some duck lips. A little duck lip action here. <laughs> Oh. Wow. This is like Rico Suave right here. <laughs> <laughs> Smooth. Rico, Rico Suave. <laughs> yeah. This one, you could, uh, you know. Now, this one will get you in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> This has got that kind of like beautiful, like sweet, caramelly kind of thing going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very light and smooth. A little sweet, but not too much. Yeah. So this is your favorite? Down. Winner. Okay. C. Winner C? Yeah. Ooh, we don't even have to retaste, huh? I mean, I'll taste it again. <laughs> sec is, sec is second place uh, B? Yeah, for sure. Okay. A is a little much. So. She didn't win my heart. A is Sweeten's Cove, named after a golf course in Tennessee. This is mm -hmm. uh, Peyton Manning's whiskey. This is his bourbon. Okay. So. Nice. So, and then glass uh, B was uh, from a, a, a limited edition release from 10 years ago, a Four Roses uh, 2014 single barrel. Okay. And uh, yeah, I only have, this is, this is my favorite recipe from, uh, from Four Roses for the, B, for the bourbon geeks out there, OESF, it's 11 year old OESF. So, this was distilled in uh, uh, 2003. Long right. time the ago. Year I, the year I was born. <laughs> right? <laughs> Same here. Uh, I was yeah. I was born in 2003. And, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm so young. And then uh, your favorite is uh, Michter's... Uh, oh, toasted barrel finish. How about it? And it's the one I got. I'm well, you you it. have you have the the standard oh. bourbon there, oh, and the, one. and this okay. is their this is their toasted. So this is a like a special, nice. like this is a special bottling, and um, it is it is one of the most sought after uh, products when it comes out. A couple things that you pointed out. It's sweeter. That's coming from a secondary barrel that's been toasted. You also said it was smoother. It's the lightest in proof. It's coming in at a little over 90 proof, whereas the um, the uh, Sweetens Cove was uh, 113 proof, and the uh, Four Roses was 109 proof. So your your palate, you you picked up on some things that you know without really having done this before um right we're absolutely spot on so all yeah. that wine sipping you've been doing <laughs> you've uh you've, you've trained your palate well yeah i'm very sensitive nose and all those things and you know so. that can go a long way in life you know people don't you know we kind of lost uh studying our senses and then covid happened and people started losing their taste and smell and and there was a pretty big interest in like, uh, you know, studying that a little bit more. And yeah. it, and I'm like, you know, smelling something bad can get you out of some pretty bad situations. Like, you don't, like the other day, <laughs> yeah. I'm walking, I'm walking in a city and I smell some stink and I go a different way away from the stink. And, you know, there's a all bunch of riffraff going on where the stink was coming from, so... <laughs> Life lessons. I'm not even gonna ask. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of how I feel when I get on a plane, you know, an airplane. Yeah, well, that was one of the positive. 
This is one of the positives Perfect about wearing a yeah. mask. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, oh, great. Oh, <laughs> this is man. Be fun. <laughs> have you so have you ever been like uh have you ever you know been like in in like a seat and like the the plane's filling up and you're like you got the whole row to yourself and you're like oh yes I got it and then the last people on they're like they take up enormous amounts of room and they end up sitting right by you <laughs> yeah. and they stink yeah and they stink <laughs> That's the worst. That's the worst. Yeah. A talker that you don't want to talk to. Yes. And a smelly person. Yeah. Uh, there is no reason <laughs> to talk to a stranger on a plane. I'm sorry. Don't. I, well, I mean, the, okay, the hey, how are you? And oh, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Okay. And then we can be done. But the ones that just, the whole flight, like I've been on flights before where I'm exhausted and I, and I, for some reason, cannot stay awake on an airplane. I am literally like head bobbing all over the place, falling asleep the whole room. And I can't fall asleep because they won't stop talking. Oh. And I feel like somebody gave me a sleeping pill and I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> if this lady would stop talking, but I'm not going to be mean, you know? So. Oh, that's, it's all good. But I, I will say yeah. that I am really jealous. I can't fall asleep on a plane. So when when I was covering wine, I used to cover wine. I was in I was in France, mm-hmm. and I was on a pretty pretty small plane, and I was flying across France, and um, I was in the back, and there were two very pretty young women, you know, sitting next to me. I was just so tired. I put my head against the um, uh, against the seat in front of me, and I passed out. And at, yeah. at this. Up until this point in my life, I was a really good sleeper on planes, whether it was a C-130 when I was in the Army or, like, middle of, you know, the middle of a plane, um, you know, going to Canada. Like, I was a good sleeper. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I I woke up feeling something uh, against my leg. I woke up and I felt this amazing amount of pressure on my on my face. <laughs> and I had like drool coming down. I had my I, the duck lips were not working at this time, <laughs> and the my mouth had was wide open, and I had been drooling all over myself. And, I'm lo- and I looked to my right, and these two French young women, early college, probably twenty to twenty two, are looking. You know, and they're and they're dressed like you know petite French stylist, you know, fashionistas, and they're yeah. looking at me in absolute horror. Who the hell is this fat American drooling all over himself? And I was so embarrassed. <laughs> I was so embarrassed. They're, they're probably like, this is what America looks like. <laughs> this is this is America. And, and I'm scared to death that I'm going to drool all over myself in the middle of a flight. So... I can no longer sleep on a plane. <laughs> you just, you're the one, you just put your mask on then, you know, you can, I don't know. I, I, I could, one of them. I have to have a, just, I have to have like a, a chin you know, strap, a chin strap, a mask, I have this whole accoutrement, and, a, helmet. Uh, a, a helmet and some pillows just to, just to get through it. But, um, yeah, hey, yeah, whatever works. I can't. Per- I feel like somebody gives me a sleeping pill every time, and I am not one of those people that takes naps in random places and things. You know, some people think can fall asleep anywhere. Yeah, I can't do that. But I tell you what, I don't know what it is. It's like the white noise and the I'm not sure. <laughs> well, <laughs> good. puts me out. Good for you. And I, I will say, like, I write well on a plane. Like, I've I've written mm-hmm. uh, a good chunk of my books on planes. But uh, yeah, no, I can't. I yeah. uh, can't do the sleeping. <laughs> those uh, those two well, French girls are, will uh, will haunt me forever. So <laughs> yeah, they probably have like a whole camera roll. Oh my god! <laughs> Imagine a story when they tell somebody. You're like a meme somewhere. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, oh. yeah, oh, yeah. I'm I'm not gonna worry about that now. Thanks, appreciate that. <laughs> but uh, so what else? What do you have? Uh, what do you have coming up? What's new? What's new you got cooking that'll be coming out here well, soon? 
Um, this summer, my son, I have him, I have a 10 year old and I have him the first half of the summer and then the second half he goes with his dad. So I've kind of been taking that time to also work, but yes, like take time to do stuff too, because I have him full custody. So I have him all the time. Mm -hmm. So, and my parents used to live here in Tennessee, but they moved. So I don't have family here anymore and I just don't have anybody to help me. And so it's like you know, to have that time sometimes is great. So I've been trying to enjoy that a little bit. Um, but also just uh, collab with a hat company. I don't know if you've probably seen a couple of them maybe, but um, I got a couple of them here. This one. <laughs> oh, nice. You know? Yeah. So, um, and then I got another one that's called, it says Mother Trucker. And, yeah, Mother Trucker. Um, that's uh... <laughs> I've seen that before. <laughs> yeah. So I got that and been doing, been full throttle on that one and um, just working and working with a bunch of brands. I just signed again with um, my amazing boot company that I love so much, which is Dan Post Dingo. Same company within one. So they've been with me for a long time and I'm thankful for them. So I'm excited to continue to work with them. And of course, before you know it, the NFR will be here, which comes around every year. And I go to that every year, so that's going to be in December. But I just know it, goes, it comes so quick. So there's a lot of planning that goes into that, too. National Finals yeah. Rodeo. I used to, I used to yeah. love watching that. Such a, great, yeah. uh, such a great event. Yeah, it really is. I love it. It's so fun. and it's. I just love dressing up, too, and have any excuse to just be myself and do... You know, it's kind of funny because the first year I went, um, I really kind of went over the top with my outfit and people, some people were like, wow, that's, that's kind of a lot, you know? And it's like, yeah, I know, I know, but do they, do, they do a red done, carpet there? Um, it's not really red carpet, but I mean, there, it, it is kind of like the Grammys of the Western world is what I mm -hmm. like to refer to it as. Um, so what you wear is a huge deal and I do work with a lot of brands and companies when I go. So, um, you know, it is important to me and I always like to have something unique and different each year. Um, that, you know, maybe that's why I like to plan ahead because sometimes, I mean, last year I had a, a guy design it and he was the designer for like Miss USA and everything. So I, he designed my red outfit last year and um, I had a few other outfits too. So, but yeah, it's just fun. It's awesome. It. Yeah. 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 Western, yeah. Western culture is, um, you know, the, the fashion it can get, um, in, it can get lost sometimes with the hats and the belt buckles, but there is a lot of nuance, mm -hmm. uh, between the, between the leather and even like a button, you know, like I love, a, yeah. I love, a, I love a good Western shirt because, there's no other genre that has the snaps like that, you know. No one else I can pull off the snaps. I love snaps. Yeah, they're it's the best. So, they're the absolute best. And I uh, hate regular buttons anymore, you know. I know, right? Well, you know the <laughs> the, the the downside to you know growing in, in a in a more horizontal way than up way for myself is is the buttons kind of come off in the middle of just you know walking. So you know, <laughs> gotta. They they I'm don't just trying they, to be Superman. Yeah, at least the buttons uh, you, you you tuck just in. Just put a Superman shirt underneath. You'll that's it. <laughs> just a just a Superman. Like, <laughs> <laughs> just be like, sorry, something was calling. But um, <laughs> yeah. So uh, so how can uh, how can people uh, get in touch with you if they want to work with you or like follow you on on the socials? Yeah, um, I'm on TikTok and Instagram. Both of them are the exactly the, look at you over there. You're still drinking. <laughs> uh huh. I'm bad. Um, <laughs> they are exactly the same. Um, it's uh, Holly underscore stocks underscore. So, and it's like uh, Holly H O L L Y and stocks is S T O C K S. And that's on TikTok and Instagram. Do you have to bring different game for both? Like, uh, I can't figure out TikTok, and I, every time I try, <laughs> I just I give up. So, I, yeah, my buddy, yeah, my buddy uh, Kenny's really good at it. I can't do it. Well, 
it's a whole different platform and you know for sure i mean it's uh there's a lot more um the dancing stuff and all those things which i said i would never do and then you see me on there doing it <laughs> sometimes i don't do it all the time but um i mean it is kind of fun some of those things can be be pretty fun if you like learn them and have fun with it i don't know i like to include friends too i feel like it makes it more authentic so well, but, maybe, yeah maybe yeah Maybe I'll get my game going, but but Instagram seems to be your jam. It seems like you've got, uh, you, you know, you. Yeah. Well, I think you have more followers on TikTok. I feel like you know Instagram, you, your engagement's like off the charts. Yeah, I, I've had Instagram longer. Um, I didn't even have TikTok, so it's kind of funny that I have more followers on TikTok. But I guess that's just how it works. Um, but to be honest with you, I started this whole gig during the pandemic. Um, like I said, I was a photographer and I had just moved here. Um, I had got full custody of my son, just moved to Nashville. Then a year after just trying to get to know everything, trying to build my business and then COVID hit and yeah. I was like, great, I don't know what I'm going to do. Nobody wants a photographer right now. And I was still trying to build this business anyways here. I mean, I had it in Alabama. It was doing great, but you know, moving it, it's totally different. So, um, anyways, I, just was like okay maybe i just need to i don't know maybe i'll just start tagging brands and like taking photos of myself and see how it goes and that's what i did and i mean it just kind of took off and i was really i was full on doing it like i still do it but like i was really on it because obviously there was nothing else going on yeah you know other than me being a mom but we couldn't even go anywhere so it was just like i was full on just like okay well i'll just keep taking these photos and keep posting and tagging brands um and yeah i mean i literally just gained so many followers really quickly and um matter of fact i gained them so quickly that some people were saying that i bought my followers which really hurt my feelings because i was like man of all the things i'm over here working my you know what off yeah um i don't even know how to do that so anyways but yeah i mean i didn't expect it to be where it is but i knew that i was going to make something out of nothing and definitely didn't want to do a nine to five because I would never see my son and that's important to me. So, right. Well, yeah. I'll say the, on, on to the bot follower thing. Um, you know, you can usually tell when someone has bought them, like they, they yeah. have, they'll have like a hundred thousand followers and then two people like their photo. <laughs> yeah. it, or, or, yeah. And then there, the comments would be like, Oh boy. Yay. <laughs> and, Love yeah. your content, you know, it's some weird shit like that, but uh, uh huh, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's always the weird little, yeah, you definitely can, or share it on at da da da, oh, those, this, yeah. da, da, da. those are the which worst. I still get those. I mean, you can't help your, you get them every once in a while, you can't help what follows you though, but yeah, um, in, 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 in my feeds, I have people trying to sell, uh, you know, scam artists trying to sell whiskey to people. And oh, no. and I'll like block him, and it's it's like whack a mole, but oh, it's such a pain, such a pain. Well, I keep getting these fake accounts, and I get messages a lot about it, and it, I see it, and I and I hear I hear the people telling me, but at the same time, there's nothing I can do about it. I'll report them, or I'll have other people report them, and then they just make yeah. another one, and then, but apparently these people are asking people for money, and yeah. these guys are sending money, and I'm like, oh no. That's Don't how do it, it. That's, I mean, I, I think the Nigerian prince from the 90s with the email scams taught us to not send money to people we don't know. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of, yes. a, kind of a thing. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's exactly. like, uh, I, I have a few like uh, friends with like, you know, 10, 20 million followers in like when they, when they have posted and tagged me in it, like all of like their stalkers will, will, um, will reach out to me for that person's number. I mean, the internet oh, world, no. the internet and social media world is creepy as shit. You know, there's well, just... Well, don't give my number out. Definitely, <laughs> definitely not. I'm just saying, but just, I, I will let you know when it happens, but when I post this, <laughs> your stalkers will reach out to me to get to you. That's just, it's just weird. Oh, no. Do you yeah, have stalkers? Actually, I've had a, I've had a few weird things. Um, yeah. I had a, a flowers show up at my not where i live now but my old house um totally random and then inside the note it just said it literally was typed out no message 
was like, uh, <laughs> wow, <laughs> <This is> like <laughs> serial killer stuff or something. Wow. And then I had, um, I don't even know who it was, but the boot company I work with said that this guy keeps adamantly constantly writing them saying he wants to buy me a pair of boots and can he, can they deliver them to me and put flowers in it? And they were like, no, we cannot. Wow. And he just kept on asking or something, but I don't know. Yeah. Be careful yeah. with that stuff. Cause those, the, that stuff's real, you know? No. Oh, people, yeah, for uh, sure. uh, people can be weird. Especially today. Yeah. But they've always They're been weird. weird. Just more access today. <laughs> I'm and what even I, weird too. <laughs> and, and what I hate what I <clears throat> what I hate about it for, for you and other people who who have built businesses on on socials like this is that there is um there is an expectation that you reply to everybody or comment. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, Sorry. it's hard. Um, I don't even see a lot of those messages sometimes. You know, they just get thrown in there. Um, I do try to look through them, but sometimes I do miss. And I've seen certain ones, like, they've gotten mad. You know, you never... And I'm like, oh, my God. You know, I didn't see it. or It's just, it is hard. And then, you know, sometimes I, I do... I mean, I do like to respond to people and um, things like that. But if, if a guy asks me a question, typically I like to respond on stories or something. Mm-hmm. I don't want to like respond directly to a, just a guy because I don't know. Some of these guys have wives or whatever. I just want to be disrespectful, you know? Sure. So I just well, to look at it. Well, I, I will no. tell you that, um, it was great to have you on the show and what an amazing perspective to share, um, about, yeah. about this, about this space. But I think most importantly, I, I know I didn't fully convert you, but I think, <laughs> But I think that if everything was like was like this Michter's yeah. toasted barrel, you would be you would become a full on whiskey drinker. Am I right? Yeah, it's not so bad. I wouldn't yeah. Okay. You can't even really it's so smooth. All right. You. Well Still your girl kind of whiskey right there. <laughs> taste it <laughs> taste that Michter's bottle I sent you and you yeah. and you tell me if it still resonates with you. I mean you can do it tomorrow, you don't have to do it today. But yeah. uh, we might we might be onto something here. We might have found your flavor profile. We might. We might. Yeah. Hey, you know, don't knock it till you try it. That's right. That's I've right. I've learned that. I actually only used to drink white wine, and people used to make fun of me. And then I went to a wine tasting, and then I started liking red wine. So, yeah. And now it may just be you are a whiskey drinker. <laughs> Can you so. imagine? This girl is really whiskey tango. <laughs> Here we go, whiskey tango, the party. <laughs> I'm bringing my duck lips, and we're gonna have some whiskey with Holly Stocks. Yeah, all right, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> well, hey, thanks for coming on, and yeah, uh, me. you know, best luck to you. And I can't wait to see more about the boots and uh, NFR, your NFR outfit, and all that. So, yeah, you, thank you so much. Cheers. Be safe out there. It. All right, you too.